One of our very own uh, accomplished something over this past year, this past season in NASCAR Camping World Truck Series racing that gave him uh, the ability to be in the championship four, which means four guys going for the championship coming up this Friday at Homestead Miami Speedway in the NASCAR Truck Series. And that person happens to be our very own Brett Moffitt from Grimes, Iowa. And there he is sporting his cool mustache from the race shop. Uh, good morning, Brett. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. Uh, you have all the trucks lined up behind you, but boy, oh boy, did you have a great year. Uh, what does it feel like knowing that you're going into the race on Friday uh, in a shot at the championship? Yeah, hey, like you said, it's been a heck of a year here at HRE. We've got five race wins and a shot at a championship here. So it's, uh, it's a true testament to how hard everybody works here. And uh, I'm just honored to be able to drive it and, and go to Miami for a chance at it. Yeah, speaking of race wins, uh, Brett, we have some video here we're going to show and uh, just uh, relive some of the race wins that you had. Now, the first one that you had a chance to uh, to take home the uh, the big trophy and uh, really punch your ticket into the playoff situation. If we could roll that video right now, that would be great. Uh, you were over at Atlanta Motor Speedway, uh, and this was, again, a typical Brett Moffitt move that what they're calling going three wide on the last lap. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a perfect situation where we lined up on the inside there and I was able to take advantage of new tires on the restart. And uh, once we had clear track, it was clean sailing for the last lap and a half there. Okay, now let, let's talk about uh, at Iowa Speedway because Iowa Speedway was uh, the place you really wanted to win at and it almost didn't happen because somebody tried to shoot underneath you. Yeah, Noah Craigston made a very aggressive move on the last lap there, but fortunately we had a good enough truck to hold him off and I knew he wasn't going to be able to stick. So fortunately for me, he got in the wall and I was able to win in front of my hometown uh, fans and family. All right, now tell us about Chicagoland Speedway. Uh, you were in second place going into that last lap, weren't you? Yeah, Chicago, we had a really good truck again, and we had speed, just not enough to get to the bumper of John Hunter. But um, fortunately, I, I was able to catch him getting into one there, and then he had some sort of engine issue or ran out of gas and um, made it an easy drive down the back stretch and threw three and four to the line. The closest finish here, we just saw the finish of the Michigan race uh, as you beat Johnny Sauter to the stripe. And then last week, tell us about last week. Yeah, the new ISM Raceway out in Phoenix uh, really set up for aggressive restarts and gave me the opening on the bottom to go for it. We had a really good truck again. I got a pit road penalty and we had to go to the back and got back to the front just in time. Now, you were just like a bottom feeding there. Uh, any of your uh, your dirt track uh, you know, memories come back into play there? Because you were just sticking on the bottom. It certainly helps. It gives you the confidence to go where other people aren't going. and. Um, you know, when you're driving a really good Tundra, it, it makes it easy. Yeah. Now, uh, explain to people how, know how this works. I mean, there's some folks that are out there saying, okay, you're, you have uh, five wins on this season. You probably uh, have the championship wrapped up, but you really didn't. You had a win, you know, last week in order to get into this championship run on Friday night. Now, explain how that process works for people that might not be familiar with it. Yeah, so with the new playoff system, we start with eight drivers. After three races, it goes down to six, and after three more, it goes down to four. Uh, you can points your way in or you can automatically win your way into the next round. And uh, going into Phoenix, we had a pretty comfortable cushion. But when the 98 started leading the race, all of a sudden that cushion was gone. Uh, I really needed either the 18 or us to win uh, to make it to Homestead with ease. And fortunately, we were able to go up there and capitalize and get ourselves locked into Homestead there. There you go. All right, now we're going to take a look and uh, show you who the the contenders are for the championship. We have the uh, the graphic here. We can pop that up on the screen. Obviously, we put Brett first on the list here. So uh, Brett Moffitt is going to be in a Toyota, and that is great news. Now, Justin Haley, what's he going to be like? Uh, Justin's been really strong the last half of the year. Um, it took him a while to find their speed and to find their group, but they've been really tough competition, and, and he's got nothing to lose either. So he's going to go out there and be aggressive. And uh, Johnny Sauter, he's in the mix. That's a champion that is uh, waiting uh, to get another trophy, isn't he? Yeah, he certainly is. You know, they've obviously got six wins this season. They've been really strong in mile and a half. And um, fortunately, studying some of the race film, it doesn't seem like Homestead's his strong suit. So hopefully that shows up again and uh, we can go out there and beat him. Okay, and then uh, we talked about Noah Gragson uh, in the other Toyota that is uh, up for the championship four that it'll be happening on Friday evening at uh, Homestead Miami Speedway. We saw how aggressive he was trying to take that victory away from you at Iowa. What do you expect out of him uh, over in uh, Homestead? 
Uh, nothing but the same. He's he's an aggressive driver. He's got speed. Uh, he's driving the truck that won the championship last year. So without a doubt, they're going to be quick when we get down there to Homestead, and we're just going to have to go there and execute and do what we know how to do, and that's uh, have speed and win races. All right. Now uh, we see all the different trucks that are uh, behind you right now, and looks like the uh, all the guys are working on a couple of them. Uh, why why wouldn't you guys just concentrate on one particular truck, or is that one ready to go already? Uh, the primary truck's almost ready to go. They're finishing that one up right now, and then they're getting the backup truck ready. Homestead, we're going to be running right next to the fence, and you never know what's going to happen. So hopefully we can keep the primary in good shape throughout practice in the race and, and bring it home clean. There you go. And speaking of uh, bring it home clean, we have a picture of what your uh, truck is going to look like on Friday because you had some pretty cool paint schemes this year, haven't you? Yeah, we've had a lot of different paint schemes, and, and fortunately we've won with most of them. So... Uh, I don't know if it's bad juju, but we've never had a repeat winner of, of paint schemes. So hopefully we can change that this weekend. <laughs> All right. So uh, you said this one, was this one on a, on a truck before? Yeah, that was actually on the truck when we ran uh, or won it at Atlanta. So uh, hopefully we change that. Oh, no, that'd be good. That'd be a good way to bookend the season, Brett, by winning uh, with the same paint scheme the first race of the year. And they can win your last race of the year with the same deal. I'm good with that. It would it would mean a lot to the Ison Group. They've been our major supporter this year, and they've been on the truck nine or ten races. So if we could get them to victory lane again and, and lift up the championship trophy, that'd be great. That is cool. What you do realize, uh, you know, when you win that trophy on Friday, uh, we will talk to you again next week. But then when you come back to visit uh, back home, when you come back home for the holidays, we want to see that trophy sitting on the counter right here. Can we do that? I can I can try to make that happen, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we're very proud of you, uh, Brett. We got so many messages from uh, some from viewers uh, wishing you the very best. And Jackie, it's cool seeing a guy that we watched in the Modifieds and in other divisions around here racing on dirt doing this well. Absolutely. Uh, Brett, I want to know what's going on with that mustache. Is that a little no-shave <laughs> November or your good luck charm? Or what's going on there? It's it's the playoff stash. I can't grow a beard, so I did a playoff stash, and it's been working so far. Hopefully, it doesn't let me down this weekend. All right, That's now good. are you going to keep it if you end up winning on Friday night? Are you going to keep that uh, mustache around for a while? No, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> It's time. Uh, it's time. It had its run, but it's time to go. Is that, well, you better take a video of you shaving it off because there's a lot of people that want to see it come off, uh, a lot of people that don't want to see to go through the process of doing that. So that would be kind of cool. Will do. All right. Listen, buddy, uh, we're, we're, again, like we said, we're very, very proud of you, and uh, we'll keep all eyes on. And hopefully on Monday morning we're going to re uh, report that uh, the champion of the Camping World Truck Series in NASCAR is from right here in Iowa, from Grimes, Iowa. Go get him, man. Thank you. I, I just want to say thank you for all the time this season and, and to all my Iowa fans and family. I appreciate all the support. Go down to Homestead and try to win the championship. Good luck to you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.